Okay, so at this point, it's pretty much common knowledge that everyone likes Mirio, right? There is so much depth to him as a character, and it also doesn't hurt that he's basically a walking emoji, and who didn't like emojis? Anyways, I was rereading a bit of My Hero Academia and came across something cool. Well, the majority of what he does is cool, but unlike the first time I read the chapter, this time I spotted something that means a lot. Something that is easy to miss, but even if you do see it, you might not be able to recognize right away what it means for him and several other characters. So get ready to learn, as today we're going to calculate the physical power and possibly speed, I'm making no promises, of one Mario Togata. Hello internet, Jojo here, and welcome to Idea Shock. And I just have to say, unlike One Piece, Bleach, Hunter x Hunter, the feats from My Hero Academia are far easier to calculate because they don't rely on much feat stacking. And that's always nice. In case you don't know what feat stacking is, I'll give an example. Feat stacking is like when a character dodges a laser beam, but then later, another character is shown to move faster than the first character, but then after a bit of time and a training montage, the first character is now able to move faster than the second person can see. As you can probably see, after a while, feat stacking can get problematic. Incredibly problematic. Looking at you, One Piece. One Piece is a bad case of this. Anyways, let's get back to the topic you're actually here for. The first time that we see Mirio in action, it's against Class 1A. Mirio speed blitzes the entire class and then takes out each of them with a single punch to the stomach. Now, this might not seem to be that impressive when you see that he punched characters like Uraraka or Hagakure, but it becomes very impressive when you realize that Mirio also wrecked characters like Sato, Deku, and Kirishima with only one punch. Now, while Deku is a viable candidate to use for this calculation, and using him would almost certainly make this feat more impressive and powerful, I don't want to talk about him again. So that's, that's my reasoning behind this. Instead, I wanted to go with the character that I have not got to talk about yet, Kirishima. But you don't have to worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. In regards to Deku, I will discuss him at the end of the video, but I just really want to talk about Kirishima first. Okay, so by looking at this panel, we can see that Kirishima had already used his quirk to harden his body before he got punched. So for Mirio to take him out in one shot, he must have struck with power much greater than what Kirishima can take. How much is that, you might ask? Well, you see, during the sports festival, we get this. In order to find how much energy Kirishima took from this robot falling on him, we first need to find the robot's weight. But to do that, we will need to find this robot's max height, and for this, we will look back to when Deku punched one. For the record, I'm using the term max height because these zero point robots are usually pretty hunched over and we need to know what their height is standing straight up for this. In the anime, after punching the robot, Deku falls for something like 22 seconds, and while we could use that, it's very unlikely as this would mean that he was falling from like 2000 meters up. And that's, obviously, way too high. Instead, we fall back to counting ye old words per minute. However, even then we run into an issue. This is the issue of internal monologue. If these words were spoken, then we would count each word, but they're not spoken. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that this monologue is something similar to his life flashing before his eyes. So all this should be happening in only a few seconds. Assuming that each one of these paragraphs of the internal monologue takes the same time as a single spoken word does, using a 160 word per minute pace, and Deku must have been falling for 12 seconds. Applying this fall time, acceleration, his terminal velocity, and the air resistance, we end up finding that Deku was at a starting height of 427.75 meters. Now, this might sound super high, and well, it kinda is. When you look at this shot from the anime, it's actually pretty clear that Deku is incredibly high. High up, guys. Like, high up in the sky. Let me fire my editor. Oh wait, that's me. Okay, so now that we know the Zero Point Robot's max height, we come to the fun part. Comparing the Zero Point Robot to the real life robot, Eagle Prime. This is a real life combat specified robot that weighs a whopping 12 tons and measures in at a max height of 16 feet tall. For this comparison, we're going to double Eagle Prime's weight due to the fact that the Zero Point Robot has considerably larger limbs and its entire midsection is covered with heavy metal armor. 
Compare the two robots height and weight, and using the square cube law, we end up with a zero point robot weighing around a minimum of 14.7 billion kilograms of steel. Using the robot's height, 427 meters, to find the velocity it would reach as it hit the ground, 91.6 meters per second, and we find this would have crushed Kirishima with the equivalent of 14.73 kilotons of TNT. 14.73 kilotons of TNT. That's the same energy as a nuclear bomb. And because Mirio can easily break through Kirishima's armor, this is the minimum amount of energy that Mirio has to be able to produce. Now it's very, very unlikely that all this power is coming from Mirio's muscles, but instead, it's most likely coming from his quirk rocketing him out of the ground at incredibly fast speeds. So considering that he is probably around 200 pounds of mostly muscle, we find that Mirio must be moving at a speed of 2.6 million miles per hour or Mach 3398. So for someone who seems to be calculating my Herculean feats non-stop, this makes sense. But for those of you who do not have these numbers seared on your mind forever, let me just say that yes, this is in fact very fast. But not like out of this world fast when you contextualize it with other feats. Speaking of fast, well I was going to say that you should see how fast you can punch that subscribe button, but uh, that does not seem safe. It's not like the button's going anywhere, and there's no hurry. So if you've not subscribed to the channel yet, then in the words of Shia LaBeouf and the Emperor, DO IT! DO IT! While you're at it, you should probably also hit that like button as well. I can use a dopamine fix. The prophecy is true. Now that we've finished talking about Kirishima, let's talk about Deku getting wasted. Not... Not that kind of wasted. Not that it's super important, but remember how I mentioned that taking out Deku is probably more impressive than taking out Kirishima? In a video that I have coming up, I recalculated some feeds and found that Deku's in-canon 100% strength is about 234 kilotons of TNT. At this point when Mirio punched him, Deku could use about 8% of his power, or about 18.72 kilotons of TNT. For Mirio to generate this amount of power, he would have had to hit Deku at a velocity of 2.94 million miles per hour, or Mach 3831. This is about 13 times faster than the leader of a lightning bolt, but of course this also makes sense. After all, Mario was considered to be the nearest to become the next number one hero, even among other pros. With all that said guys, that's really all I have for this video. As I mentioned before, I have a video coming out not too far from now, I just gotta finish it up, so stay tuned for that. Anyone who likes My Hero Academia, or has seen My Hero Academia, will like it. Hopefully. Anyways guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember to stay spectacular. Jojo, out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. You've been great. See you soon. Adios.